This is your beginner's guide to wire armature for needle felted animals. I'll be showing you the tools and materials that I use for making a wire armature. I'll also be answering those common questions that you all have. What wire do I use? Why even use a wire armature? What size will I need? Later on, I'll be demonstrating how I can go from some wool and some pipe cleaners to make this gorgeous little bunny. I'll also be showing you how to start planning and creating your own armature for a fox. So I will start with the wire, the pipe cleaners over the top, and then I will show you how to wrap the wool afterwards. I'll also be showing you how to make the tiniest of feet for rodents. So I'll be showing you a guinea pig, a rat, a mouse foot. So stay tuned. This is your fun pack guide with loads of tips along the way. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Heidi Feathers, who are the sponsor of this video. They have a wonderful range of wire, tools, wools, everything pretty much that you'll need for making realistic needle felted animals. And I'm so excited to be showing you some of those today. If you use the code in the video description below, you'll get a 10% discount on anything in the online shop at www. HeidiFeathers.com. Now it's only for the first 50 of you watching this, so be sure to go and have a look at the website and don't miss out. So why use a wire armature? Now you can make a complete animal with only wool, and many times I do, but using a wire frame is great for planning out your animal and keeping to proportions according to the real animal's anatomy. You can use it as a simple skeleton on which to add the wool, which effectively will be like creating an animal from the inside out and adding the muscles and fat, and finally, the fur and external features. Just like the bones, in a real animal, the metal frame provides stability, especially when creating a larger upright structure. Having a wire inside my donkey, I could have one leg raised, but the rest of it is still really stable and wouldn't topple over. And your animal doesn't need to be standing necessarily. It could even be sitting or in a lying pose, but you can start out with the structure and then bend it into position. With this Siamese cat body, as I was experimenting, I wanted to see how it would look like in a laying down pose. And in actual fact, this fox actually ended up laying down fully. Um, once I started on the basic structure, I decided I wanted it lying down and then I added all the fur on in that position. Even when you finished your animal, there can be some degree of posability. Now you can have a wire going right from the tip of the nose all the way through the body and the legs and then ending up at the tip of the tail. But you don't have to have a wire throughout the animal. I often like to take time on the detail, for example, of the face and I create my head separate. The same with the tail. It can be part of the main framework or you can add it later. Poppy the Spaniel Cross has a very long fanned out tail and I really wanted to get the detail right, so I made the tail separately and added it later. For some animals that you make, you might want to make them in wool, but then add the appendages with a wire through them. For example, with the red panda, she was really quite big, so after I'd started making her torso and her head, I then decided to add some legs that had wire in them, just to give a bit more strength to my structure. I also started with a wire for the tail, wrapped the core wool around it and got it really thick and bushy with those lovely orange and browns. She's so big and cuddly you don't realise that there's a wire through the middle, but even so it gave her that strength and ability to stand up. When it comes to birds you might want to use wire in the legs and feet to hold the body up. So with the sparrow here it's all wool, but then I made these tiny little feet to add on afterwards. Some things it just makes sense to have wire, so with tiny little toes for example, you've already got the structure there, you just wrap the wool over and it's really simple to do. So with my quoll, I made the tiny little feet here to add on, but I also made the tail out of wire as well. And it just has that element of being able to bend things in place with the tail as well and get the right position. It was definitely worth using a wire in my pipistrelle bat, so his body was all wool. But then I used a wire for the bones in the wings and the tail membrane. And my long-eared bat I made, I don't know if you've ever seen a long-eared bat in real life, but they have the biggest ears ever. They're like bigger than the size of their own bodies. 
and so it just made absolute sense to use wire in those huge ears as well. So it's really down to personal preference. Go with what you feel comfortable with. Have a real think about the animal you are making. Use wire if you feel it'll be easier for you or if it'll make the structure stronger and more stable. Experiment and most of all, have lots of fun with it. So what tools and materials might I need for armature making? Here's a quick overview of some of the things that you might need when you're making your armatures. I'll explain more about them in a moment and I'll be demonstrating some of them later. You'll need a hard surface for armature making, a felting base for wrapping your wool and stabbing the wool into place. You'll need some wire. I've got some aluminium wire here, some paper covered wire and some pipe cleaners. These will depend on what you're making. For thin wire or pipe cleaners, you'll need some scissors to cut them. And for some wire, you'll need to use some pliers to bend and to cut. It's good to have some reference photos or anatomy diagrams or sketches to refer to when you're making your armatures. Tape measure or ruler is also very helpful. And then you'll need some wool. This is to wrap over the wire and to build up the body and to stab the wool in place and to sculpt your animal, you'll need some needles. You may also find a needle holder is helpful for holding more than one needle at a time. This isn't an exhaustive list. There may be some things that you'd also like to use. For example, some people like to use glue or waxes to enable their wool to stick better to the wire. We won't be needing those in what I show you today, but that's something that you might prefer to use. So when you start out bending and cutting your wire, I would suggest that you use a hard surface. It makes it more sturdy to work against to create the shape that you want. So you could use a table or a board or a lap tray, I tend to use the lid of a storage box. It's best to use something that you don't mind getting slightly scratched potentially. If you're using your foam or wool pad or whatever you're using for your felting base, um, you might ruin the surface. Also, some wires have a metal coating that can come off onto your mat. When it comes to adding your wool onto the wire and felting it into place, you'll need a felting surface that is sturdy but also enables you to stab without breaking the needles or yourself. There's loads of felting surfaces out there. There's mats, there's foams, there's brushes. The one I'm using today is an extra large eco wool mat from Heidi Feathers. It's a brilliant size for all my projects. And what I love about it is that it's completely wool. So it's uh, recycled, 100% wool filled and it's covered with a soft merino cover in two colors. So one side is a creamy color and the other side is a darker beige so it's very easy to clean anyway but if you wanted to have one side for your docks and one side for your lights then you can do so it's firm but it's comfortable to use and it's great if like me you're looking for a mat that is long lasting and environmentally friendly so this one measures 10 inches by 13 inches and is two inches thick and tidy feathers also sell the large and the small size if you'd like to go a bit smaller when it comes to wire and also pipe cleaners, you might be wondering how on earth you should choose what size wire to have. This will really depend on the size of the animal you're making and why you need the wire in the first place. Do you need it to be sturdy enough to hold quite a weighty amount of wool for a large animal? Do you need to just use it to um, make some more shapes for feet or toes? Is it for structure or is it for reinforcement? So when it comes to wire, the higher the number in gauge, the thinner the wire and the lower the number, the thicker the wire. Just remember that. Heidi Feathers sell a huge selection of wires and pipe cleaners. It's really worth going on their website and taking a look. I've got some of their range here. This is the 15 gauge wire made out of aluminium. It's one and a half millimetres thick and it comes in a roll of five metres in length. There's also a 12 gauge available on the website. This is thick for a strong armature structure such as the fox I will show you later. But it's also really flexible so you can manipulate it by hand. I still use pliers to cut the wire though and to create precise bends and twists. I also have here some paper covered wires. They come in straight lengths of 30 centimetres. Again, these wires are flexible and can be manipulated by hand. They are covered with paper to enable the wool to grip much easier to the wire. 
you won't get any metal rubbing off onto your fingers. They're really easy to use. You can get them as large as 18 gauge right down through to the 30 gauge. It's a brilliant range. I have the 24 gauge as well as the 28 gauge, but I really think I'm going to start collecting them all because I would love to have a whole variety like this and just watch out for me making lots of little animals of different sizes. If you haven't tried paper covered wire, do try it. What I also love about it and a great tip is that you can colour in the paper. So if you are making small toes, for example, and you want to colour in the ends as claws, you can do so. So use your thicker, lower gauge wires for your donkeys, your horses, dogs, cats, anything that's fairly large and that you want to be standing upright or you want to get the really good proportions. And then use your thinner wires for your feet, tiny toes. For pliers, I would recommend these multi-tool pliers. They have everything you need for armature making. So you can cut the wire, you can also flatten the wire like with flat nose pliers. But it also has this kind of curved edge, a bit like round nose pliers. So it's everything in one go. You shouldn't need anything else if you've got these. I'll show you how I use them in my demonstration later. Now you won't catch me cleaning pipes, which are what pipe cleaners are meant to be for, <laughs> but um, you will find me with a massive stash of pipe cleaners. Um, I absolutely love using them for my needle felting projects. Now you can get them in all sorts of colours and thicknesses and lengths, but I particularly like these ones from Heidi Feathers because they're in kind of natural and animal colours. There's black, there's light brown, there's white and there's pink. In the past, I've used the really cheap pound shop versions in crazy fluorescent colours. And although it's fun to use those when I'm trying to imagine my animal, but I'm using fluorescent green and blues and yellows, this just makes it look a bit more kind of the animal that you're actually making. These ones are also very good quality. They measure six millimetres. They're lovely and soft and flexible. They're easy to bend with your fingers and you can cut with the normal scissors. Beware though that they will have those sharp ends so make sure to cover well with the wool or bend the end up when you use them. You can buy them in packs of individual colours in bundles of 20 or 100 or as a mixed colour pack of 80. Pipe cleaners are actually a very very tiny tiny wire but they are covered in this fluffy material. It makes it really easy to wrap your wool around it. I have lots of black pipe cleaners because I love to create the legs on insects such as bees. You can actually leave the pipe cleaner bare if you want to. So for example when I'm making Mr Bumbly Bee I create a framework from my black pipe cleaners, add the wool for the body but I leave the legs and the antennae free from wool apart from a tiny little bit of colour with the merino wool along the length at the leg joins for example. I did a similar thing with the yellow faced bee, but I wrapped black wool over much of the legs to give them shape. And then I reverse felted them to keep them fluffy. I left the end of the legs free from wool and also the antennae. For tiny sculptures, you could just snip some of the fraying bits on the pipe cleaners to make them a shape. So you could use the pink for, for example, a mouse tail, um, the brown for a weasel tail, you can really get creative with the pipe cleaners. As mentioned earlier, you can also use the pipe cleaners to add structure to large ears to keep them upright and bendy. I also use them as a base for dog tails, donkey tails, and just wrap core wool over and then add strands of long merino wool to make bushy tails. The inside of my red squirrel tail is simply two pipe cleaners twisted together. You can also make teeny tiny armatures, which I will be showing you soon to demonstrate how to make a tiny bunny. And another brilliant use for pipe cleaners is to wrap them over the wire for larger animals. And I'll be demonstrating this when I make the fox armature. There are many types of wool out there, but when it comes to wrapping wool over a wire, I would suggest that you go for something like the carded sliver. Carded wool is great when you're first starting out because it's quicker to felt anyway as the fibres go in various directions. But as carded slivers come in long lengths, I find that it's easier for wrapping the wool over the wire, as well as then breaking up sections to add the pieces for the body shape. 
I've chosen some beautiful carded slivers from the Menagerie range. For the little bunny that I'm going to be making, I just want a small amount of colour. I'm not going to be using a core wool to start with, but using the colours that I want to end up with. So I'm going to use a few colours here. I've got the deer colour, which is slightly darker, and then the rabbit, which is a light browny grey colour. So I'll be adding that straight onto my armature. For my fox armature, he's going to be much bigger than the bunny. So I'm going to be layering the wool onto the framework and building up the body. So I'll use this wool as my core base. This is a natural undyed sliver and it's called polar bear white. For my barbed needles, it really depends on what size animal I'm making and the amount of detail. Generally speaking, the thicker the better for not breaking on any wires. Though if you're really careful, hopefully you won't break any anyway. I tend to use a selection, so when it comes to adding the wool onto my armature, I'll use a 36 gauge triangle or a 38 gauge star or triangle. And then I'll get more fine in my needles, so when adding detail I'll use a 40 gauge triangle, maybe a 42 for really tiny detail. I'll also use a reverse needle to make my animal fur fluffy. I've always bought my needles from Heidi Feathers because they have such a brilliant selection, they're great in quality, they're colour coded so you don't forget what you're using. You can buy them individually or you can buy them as a variety pack. I have the Ultimate Mix which has everything that I need for my needle felting. I like to use two or three needles at once in my multi-needle tool. When you're felting larger armatures then it's so much quicker for felting. I can build up the body of a fox in no time. Um, I'm using the Clover needle felting handle here. It's my all-time favourite. I've had it for years. It's a safe and effective way to hold up to three needles at one time. I often just use two. Now for the bunny armature using pipe cleaners. When planning any armature, I'll get Google images up either on my computer or on my phone. I'll have some sort of measuring um, utensil such as a ruler or measuring tape, a pad and pen, and I'll just study the real animal before I get stuck in. So for the rabbit, I'll start thinking about the anatomical basis of my animal. So having a skeleton to look at is really useful. I've got a rabbit skeleton here, um, just showing me where the bones are and the basic structure is. I'll use that for the armature. And then I will start also looking for pictures of the actual kind of shapes and the fur and the position that I want my rabbit to be in. I quite like the standing bunny, but also the sitting bunny. And if you want a lop-eared, this one's great for the colour tones that I might want to choose for the fur. This one for the detail of the face, shape of the ears, the eyes, position of the paws. If you want your rabbit sitting up, for example. I often use basic drawings as well because I just want to get the form of the shapes in my mind. Getting the basic shape before thinking about the detail is really important. Just choose your favourites to refer to. I sometimes choose the shape from one and then the detail from another. This one's great for studying the paws. If it helps, you can also do a drawing. I feel it helps with the kind of head to hand connection of what you are planning. I drew out a few options here, but actually I really like the standing bunny, so I think I'm going to go with that. Whatever you decide, you could go with the standing and then move it into the sitting position. Take five pipe cleaner lengths. With the first pipe cleaner, bend it in half and this is going to become the spine. You're going to twist it from the bent end and don't just wind one around the other. Try and twist it at the same time so that you get the equal twisting so one side does not become too long. Do this the best you can, it doesn't matter if it's completely perfect. And if you line that up against your picture, bend the ends up so that there's no sharp pointy ends. And there we have your spine. With the second piece, we'll make the front legs. You can measure the shape out against your picture. 
to ensure the proportions are correct. Now remember that your armature is not 2D, it needs to be 3D with the shoulder width as well. So allow for that when you're measuring out. Work out where the base of the neck will be. And simply twist your second piece around the, the base of the neck before extending out to the shoulders and down into the leg. Lay your second leg over the other to get the right shape. When you get to the end of the legs, make sure to bend the end so there's no sharp points again. And there we have the front legs with the shoulders. Keep referring back to your diagram or your photo. The third piece will become the hips and the back legs. Again, measure one leg with the diagram or the photo. I'm bending the end so there's no sharp point. And then just like with the shoulder width, make sure that you have a nice width for the hip area. I'm twisting my piece around the end of the spine, wrapping that little tail end over it. And measuring the second leg against the first. With my fourth piece of pipe cleaner, I'm going to reinforce and strengthen the back legs. Simply starting at the tail end of the spine and wrapping it around the legs. I'm going to snip it off at the ankle. And then I'm doing the same on the other leg again, going right down just to the ankle point. Then with my fifth and final piece, I'll be reinforcing and strengthening those front legs. You can do this in two separate pieces, like with the back legs, or you can do it in one. So I'm bending it in half and then doing it one leg at a time. With the front legs, I went all the way down to the end of the leg, to where the paws would be. The main thing is to make sure that they are nice and strong and not flimsy. Yeah, there will still be some bend in them. It's actually really, really fun to do. I've got one here that is standing and then the other one that is sitting. You can really use your imagination even before you start adding the wool. When stabbing the wool into place, I'm using a variety of needles here. 38 and 40 gauge just because it's quite a small armature. I'll cover the majority of my rabbit with the card of sliver that is called rabbit. It's a brilliant colour, it's very similar to the wild rabbit here in my picture. And once I've added some of that I'll be then adding some darker shades of the one called deer. I'll also use some polar white for its fluffy belly. So prepare a length of your sliver. Make sure it's as smooth as you can before wrapping. You'll need to keep it as tight as you can as you wrap. Imagine the wool is a piece of ribbon. As you wrap, you'll need to overlap the new wrap over the previous wrap. 
tuck it near to the base and wrap as tightly as you can on each wrap. You can use your other hand to hold it in place as you go. The tighter you wrap, the less needle felting you will need to do. I tend to start with the spine and then I'll work my way down the legs. I won't be showing you in detail every single part of the rabbit because I will be here for hours, <laughs> but I will show you the very basics of starting with wrapping and then are starting to add a bit more bulk. I will speed up the rest of the process so you get an idea of how I did it. When I get to my end, I'm simply overlapping it around the, the tail end using my 38 star needle to stab it into place. Then I'm going back to my starting end stabbing that into place but you shouldn't need to stab along the length if you wrapped it really tightly and then I'm just going to keep wrapping over the piece that I've already done. You can start adding thicker pieces. The main thing here is to add bulk to your anatomy and to start shaping where the fat and the muscle would go. There's no real trick or precise way of doing this as long as you keep wrapping, keep stabbing and follow your reference photos or diagrams. The thicker you go, you'll need to do a little bit more stabbing. In the same way as when you went over the spine, wrap wool over the legs. With my bunny, I'm only taking the wool down to the ankle because I'm going to add some wool paws on later. Once you've added a good layer of wool to the spine and to the legs, you can start adding far more shape to make it look like a bunny. Here I'm adding shape to the bottom area and adding shapes to make thighs. Whatever you add to one limb, you will need to do the same to the other. For the tummy, I'm making a very large cylindrical wad and adding that on and extending that out under the pelvis area. Then adding a wad for the chest area, then thickening the top of the front legs, adding wool to the sides of the rabbit to give it some width, then adding some of the white for the belly. You might want to use your 40 gauge triangle when you're adding more detail, such as the darker deer colour. Then I added some front paws with white underneath. I'm using a dark brown for the detail for the paws. Similar thing with the hind paws, but these are slightly longer. I then went on to make the bunny head. Adding the facial detail using my reference. You might want to use ready-made eyes. I always use wool for my eyes. Then I added some lovely long ears, added the head on, made a cute tail. Then I reverse belted the whole bunny to give it a gorgeous fluffy look. As a final touch, I added horse hair for whiskers. You can also get these from the Heidi Feathers shop. And there is the bunny. It's amazing what you can make just from some pipe cleaners and adding wool. He's still quite flexible, so you can move him into position. I hope you like him and I hope you have so much fun making your own as well. Next, I'll demonstrate a wire armature for a fox. I've printed out some anatomy diagrams. This one's around 14 centimetres in body length. And that will fit on an A4 piece of paper nicely. But I wanted my fox a little bit bigger, so I printed out A4 and another piece of A4 so I can sellotape the two together. And this way I can include the tail. This one's around 18 centimetres in body length. So I'll use this as my reference. This is just a Google image that I found and I really particularly like this because it has the skeleton structure but also shows you the kind of fat and muscle and the overall shape of the fox as well for later on. I'll be taking the wire from the head through to the rump. I'll be making the tail separately with pipe cleaners. Now where you start with this, it's really completely up to you. 
you could start with the head and legs. I've seen some people start that way or you can make a complete piece. I'll just show you one way that I found to be efficient. I've got my aluminium wire on the reel. What I love is that it's really bendable with your fingers. So I can simply follow the curve of the bones in the skeleton to get my proportions. I'm starting on one leg and then working my way up. From the toe up to the shoulder, make sure to follow the curve so there's a really good width to your fox. It needs to be 3D and it needs to stand well. Then follow along the spine. Go right to the end of that pelvic bone, then curve it round onto the thigh bone. And extend down the leg until you reach the end of the foot. Then cut with your pliers just beyond the end of the foot. We'll be bending the ends in a minute. Now we're going to be making exactly the same piece again. So follow the shape round from your other piece. All the way round until you reach the foot again. Keep going back to your reference diagram to maintain the shape and keep the two pieces very, very close together. The next piece will become the head and neck and winding over the spine of the two pieces you've already made. So cut off a piece that is twice the length of the nose to the rump. So get your spine section ready with those ends really curved round. We're going to do this first starting from the tail end. So turn it round, keeping your two pieces very, very close together, wrap round tightly with your new piece of wire. This wire is really malleable as it's soft, but it's also really sturdy to hold things up. And when you get to the neck end, turn it back round and twist to the end. I'm going to bring the wire through the middle so that the neck is protruding from the centre, not just from one side. Then bring your wire across the neck and right the way down to the tip of the nose. Form a little bend for the nose and then twist the wire back down the neck. Any excess wire you can go back down the spine again. Make sure all of your little bends are in place according to your diagram. That end piece that I started with, I'm going to just tuck around and make sure there's no sharp ends. And there you have a wire armature for your fox. You can leave the feet as they are. I'm going to be bending the ends so that I don't have any sharp edges. I'll be adding my paws later on. I just want to point out here that I'm not seeing any residue from the wire, even though I've been working very closely with it. A lot of wires will leave a coating on your fingers. This one doesn't, which is great. So you can bend the wire really easily with your fingers. You might want to use the pliers though to get some really accurate bends and to flatten the ends perfectly. Great, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to now add some pipe cleaners. They add extra strength and enable the wool to grip more easily. I'm going to wrap the white ones over the main body frame and the black ones for the bottom part of the legs where I'm going to be adding some darker wool later. So I'm simply winding the pipe cleaners over the spine then over the top part of the legs. If you make the wraps really close together as you wind them, then you'll have covered most of the wire. If you wanted to, you could use more of the aluminium wire over the legs, but I would like my legs to be fairly thin. So using just the pipe cleaners means that the legs will be nice and narrow.
Then I'm using my black ones for the bottom half of the legs, going right to the tip of the feet and back again. The armature feels nice and sturdy and strong and most importantly stands upright. <laughs> I'm using the polar white carded slivers. This will create my core shape of the fox. Just like with the bunny armature earlier, I'm wrapping the wool over like a ribbon, each layer overlapping the previous one slightly, going as tight as possible so there's less need for needle felting. As this fox is a lot larger, there's gonna be a lot of wrapping. So I'm going to speed this all up the main thing is that you can see that I'm wrapping over where the white pipe cleaners are to start with. I'm wrapping and then stabbing into place, being careful of my needles so I don't break them with any of the wire. You can use long pieces, but only as much as you can cope with at one time. You need to go as tight as possible. Once the pipe cleaners are all covered, you can then start layering more wool onto the main body for more bulk. You can start adding more wool to the neck, a bit more to the tops of the legs. This is a great basis for then adding the tummy and the thigh shapes and the shoulders and then the head. So look out for when I make a video on the rest of the fox. So how is it all going? Let me know in the comments what animal you think you'll make first with your white armature. Next for three rodent feet demos. I'll start off with the guinea pig's front foot, then move on to a rat's foot or it could be a large mouse. And thirdly, a thinner toed mouse foot to demonstrate a slightly different method. I'll use my 24 gauge wire and then my 28 gauge. So the guinea pig's toes are fairly equal in length. And you'll see that they're a lot thicker at the base than they are at the ends. And the toes are quite splayed out. Guinea pigs interestingly have three toes at the back and four toes at the front. And I've included their funny little pads on the underneath of their feet in my drawing, which helps as a reference as well. At one end of my 24 gauge, I'm measuring four centimeters in length for each toe. And I'm gonna bend it so that I have double thickness for each toe, which I will twist in a while. The overall length will be less than four centimeters once I've twisted it. I'll prepare all four toes at the same length before I twist. This is just one method for making toes. I will show you the other method when I come to my third foot. So keep bending them. Just try and get the same length each time. And I'm going to leave the end of my wire for now. Then starting with the first toe, give it a really good twist from the base up until the end. You can use your fingers. It's fairly easy, although you might need some help slightly at the ends with your pliers. So use your flat edge to pinch the end really flat. You want those toes to be really pointy. Continue with the other toes. The main thing is to keep them all the same length as much as you can. You can then thread the excess wire through the base of the foot. Cut the end and just make sure there's no sharp end hanging by bending the end with your pliers. When it comes to wool, you'll need a very thin strand. Be careful not to break it apart. Remove any blobby bits and prepare a smooth strand. Now tightly wrap from the base of the toe towards the end. Wrap it like a ribbon. 
tightly overlapping the previous wrap on each turn. Move up your opposite thumb and finger as you go. When you get to the end, pull your strand at an angle away from the end of the toe. Catch the end tightly as you wrap. And then you can wrap back down the other way. Then stab the end of the wool with your needle. I'm using my 40 gauge triangle. And then stab any excess wool from the beginning into the base of the foot. You can then use the warmth of your fingers and hands to smooth it and get rid of any fuzz. And there we have our first toe. Then start your next toe. Again, at the end, make sure that you go at an angle and just literally capture that end so that it's completely covered. And then complete the other toes. I'm adding some wool to thicken the base of the toes. Then more to bulk out the foot a little more before adding those weird little shaped pads on the base of the foot. Just simply add as much detail as you'd like. And there we have a little guinea pig foot. I hope you like it. Now rats and mice have five toes. With our 28 gauge wire, we're going to start off with the shorter little toe as it were on the left front foot. The same as with the guinea pig, but I'm gonna twist this first toe. And again, pinch the end to be flat. So it has a nice pointy end. The next three toes are roughly the same size, so I'm going to bend those first before twisting. And the fifth one is a tiny little thumb. Again, making sure the end is nice and pointy. then cut the very end of your excess wire and then just about an inch just wrap that around the base of the foot again. The main thing again here is to make sure that I bend the very end so that there's no sharp pieces sticking out. Then wrap each of the toes in the same way that you did with the guinea pig foot earlier as tightly as you can. And then when you've done your toes, you can then add wool for the foot. You might need your 42 gauge triangle needle here. And there we have a little Mr. Ratty's foot. For my mouse foot, I'm using a different method, cutting up lengths, one single piece for each toe and then bending the ends with my pliers. I'm carefully wrapping each piece with very thin strips of wool. Making sure both ends are neatly wrapped, stabbing any fragments into place and rubbing between my warm hands to smooth. Instead of wool, you could also use a pen or paint to colour them. Once I've wrapped my toes, I'm going to wrap the three centre toes to bind them. And this will start to form the base of my foot. Make sure you cover the ends. And stab the shape, including between the toes. 
Then you're going to wrap another piece of wool around the outer toes to fix them into place. Add some more wool to the front and back. And le voila, you have a little mouse foot. It's a bit more dainty than your ratty one and just as cute. Thank you so much for watching the video. You might want to watch this one next.